Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made buttons happen. So now we can have buttons. You can see when we hover over them, they get lighter. And when we press them, they get darker. We have some actions that are performed when we press them here on the exit button, it exits. So with that done, we have almost everything we need to make a men main menu. So let's make one. The first thing that I've been thinking is I want to move this state package out of the game package. So drag it onto the source so it's at the top level and then go into here into the state package and create a package. Name it game. So that way I don't want my game state to be, I don't want it to be uh, game state and then game again. So rather, now that we have our different states, we can have a package for them. And in the old game package, the top level one, we have this UI package, which, which is specific to our game. Now we can move that entire package into the new game package inside of the state one. So inside of the state game package, we have the state and the UI, which belongs to that state. Awesome. And you see where this is going. Let's make a package called menu inside of that package. Let's make a class called the menu state and the menu state will extend state. Let's create that constructor matching super. And now if you go to the game class, you can see that when we initialize it, we set the state to a game state by default. Let's now set that to a menu state. And it's not going to work right away. If you press play, you'll see why. There we go. We got a null pointer exception, and that was in the renderer. So at line 42, and what's happening is this game map is null. So we have this game map in our parent state uh, class if we want to use it for anything. So either we say don't render the map if we don't have a map. But for now, I'm just going to give our menu state a map. So it's going to have a map in the background, even though we're not going to play on that map. So let's just copy this line. There we go. And we're still not quite finished. So press play again. Now you can see that we got another null pointer and it's inside of the camera class. So it says that object with focus is null. Um, and we've set it to an optional, but we never initialized it. So we need to say this object with focus is equal to optional empty. There we go. Now we should be able to play and have no crashing. That is very good. All right, let's get to building our main menu. So let's make a UI package inside of our menu package. Let's create a class called UI main menu. And the UI main menu will be a vertical container. So let's create that constructor. What do we want our main menu to have? Let's add a new UI text, which will be the name of our game. And I'm going to name my game ISO Bubbler because we're isolating using bubbles. And then let's add a button. I'm going to name this play. And then it has some action. I'm just going to write action. Then maybe we have the options here. And then let's say exit. And we can, of course, do that. There we go. We're also going to need an alignment because it's not centered by default. And at center, center is where I'm thinking. And then we need to add this main menu to our menu state. So UI containers dot add new menu, sorry, UI 
main menu and it takes the window size. All right, let's try that out. Awesome, works well. However, we don't just want some system logging when we press these buttons, we want stuff to happen. So when we press buttons, we should still be in this state, but we need to change what UI element we are interacting with. And if we press play, we want to change the entire state. And that happens inside of the game class. So we're going to need to do a little bit of work for that to happen. Let's start with a simpler case. Let's start with this button options. We want to change that to something. First of all, let's make a new UI. So UI option menu. And this is also a vertical container. Just for now, let's add a UI text called options and a UI button which says back and it has some action. So here, what we would like to do is we want to say state, enter menu, and then maybe new UI main menu with the window size. But we don't have the state here. We need the state to come in here. And currently that does not work because if you look at our button, it uses a runnable and a runnable doesn't take any arguments so we can't use a runnable so let's make our own functional interface i'm gonna name it click action it's just gonna have one method it's gonna return nothing and i'm gonna call it executes like we have in other places and it will take a state as an argument now we can use it inside of this UI button instead. Let's say click action here. Let's also rename this to click action. And let's, yes, rename all of that here, click action. And it's not called run anymore, but execute. And now this needs a state, but we didn't need the state before. So we never took it in into the on click uh, method, but we can because we do have access to the state where we're calling this method from because that is inside of the UI clickable, inside of the update method here. If we have focus and the mouse is clicked, we are clicking. So let's just pass that in and put that in the signature. That should have fixed that. And I think we can close these down. All right, so now we need to take these in here. Awesome. So if we're in here, we won't put this though inside of the main or the parent state class for now. So let's menu state is what I was going to say. There we go. Inside of the menu state, let's create that public void enter menu method. So this will take a UI container and the reason it's called enter menu is we're gonna clear the containers first. So even though you can use any container, the naming will suggest that stuff happens, menu stuff happens rather. So all other UI components will be gone. We only want the menu ones. So then let's add the container. All right, going back to the option menu. See, now this is happy. Let's copy this, go into the UI main menu, and when we're doing the options, let's instead, sorry, copy, didn't paste over enough, there we go. Instead of giving it, there we go. Instead of giving it a new UI menu, we want a UI option menu, right? Also, let's check the option menu because I don't think we gave it an alignment. New alignment, and we have the center, center alignment. Let's see if that worked. 
right this is the game state it also needed the state objects in here as arguments there we go all right so this is saying concurrent modification exception and we all remember what that is so this functional for each method is locking this list so we can't add or remove anything from it while we are looping over it and there were a couple of solutions either we make a copy of this list or we use an indexed loop and since our ur containers will never really contain very many objects i feel like a copy of this ui containers will be fine so we're looping over a copy so we're not modifying the original list and that will make this fine there we go see this works awesome now that that works let's see if we can change this state that means we need access to the game and we can have that when we are updating the state the state can know about the game the things inside of the state probably we don't want to send it down all the way but to its child is probably fine so what i'm thinking is since we can't from our um we can't tell our game from our components or other objects inside of this project we can't tell the game to switch state we have access to the state but not to the game class that means in the state i'm gonna now keep a i'm gonna keep a state called next state all right and this will be null we're gonna need a way to set this alt insert make a setter for the next state we are going to tell the game object from this update we're going to say if next state isn't null then we want to say game dot enter state maybe we had enter menu now we have enter state and let's just give it the next state so Let's create this method inside of the game class. And what this will do is it will say that state is equal to next state. And we need to pass in this when we update our state. So now let's just set state, set next state, new game state. This needs the window size and the input which we have inside a state get input all right let's see if that worked let's see okay now we need to take in the game object into the game state and pass it on in the super constructor or sorry in the super call update call to super all right let's try that again And there we go. Look at that. We actually made it to the game. Let's just go quickly into that game state. We're already in there. In the menu, let's do the reverse. Let's say state, set next state. Oh, right. We actually have that here. Well, let's do that anyway. Set next state at new menu state and this now needs a window size and we don't have the window size when we are here so we need this often enough that I'm gonna just keep it inside of the state uh, I'm just gonna keep a copy of this window size now so that we don't have to look for it there that will make our lives a little easier so i usually i don't want to bloat our classes but we are using this so much that i feel like it will bring value for us now we can just use that here all right 
let's try that again. All right, look, we are switching between the menu and the game and it's working quite well. So I'm happy with this for now. Yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey, Doa.